In the world of luxury handbags, how is it that some of them become iconic? <laughs> Turns out it's down to the women who wear them. This video is entirely inspired by at Gemini's Will Understand on TikTok. She did a video about why the Louis Vuitton Capucines isn't like proving to be as popular as Louis Vuitton wants it to be. And she brought up a really interesting point that I hadn't really thought about before, that behind each iconic bag is an iconic woman. And so I thought I would like to delve into this today. With the deluge of designer bags that are launched uh, what feels like daily, there are a small group that have stood the test of time as it were, right? Have come to be known as iconic and timeless, foolproof, trend-proof go-tos. They are above the trends. And what is it aside from their design, right? Because let's be honest, lots of bags come out that have sort of, you know, trend-proof designs and still get forgotten about. What is it about these bags? Let's begin with the Lady Dior. This bag was originally called the Chouchou, which I believe means the favourite in French, in 1995. And it was sort of like, before it was publicly released, it was given to um, a very small select group of women, one of which was the First Lady of France. And she decided to gift one of these fabulous pieces to Princess Diana, who from that moment onwards has been photographed with this bag, countless times. She even wore it on the Met Gala red carpet in a fabulous, was it like a dark blue? The charms were crystal studded, 10 out of 10. But apparently Princess Diana loved the bag so much that she contacted Dior and ordered the bag in every color. This bag became so sort of like synonymous with Princess Diana and she was such a fan of the bag that they then renamed the bag to what we now know it as the Lady Dior. And 28 years on, this bag is a Dior classic and is probably the most recognisable Dior bag ever. Guys, if you are new here, my name is Cassie and I'm a self-diagnosed luxury addict. I put out videos on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, so if you like luxury fashion, then you're gonna love it here. So head down there, subscribe, turn on the bell, become a member of our luxury addicted family. When are we going to rehab? <laughs> Never. 1928 came along a bag called the Hermes Sac de Pêche, and this bag, there were previous versions of it before, but the most sort of similar version to what we now know as the MS Kelly was renamed the Kelly because Princess Grace Kelly of Monaco was a big fan of the bag. I will tell you how she became a fan of the bag and famously used it to sort of hide her pregnancy. She had it in front of her pregnant belly to hide it from the paparazzi in 1956. One of those paparazzi pictures ended up in Life magazine and the popularity of this bag shot through the roof. This was a piece for the fashionable woman. Now, she even came to know of this bag because she was an actress and the film that she was working on just before, To Catch a Thief, the costume designer had bought a load of Hermes accessories and bags for her character, one of which was what we now know as the MS Kelly and she fell in love with it and apparently refused to give it back after production. <laughs> she said, you're coming home with me. Launched in 1930, the Louis Vuitton Speedy um, followed the launch of the very famous Louis Vuitton Keypore luggage. Now this bag came in a size 30, 35 and 40, right? So on the bigger size. And it was meant to be a bag that was a great everyday bag and one that could be, be easily packed. You can squash that Speedy down to be packed on top of things and all of that, right? 35 years after its release in 1965, Audrey Hepburn came to Louis Vuitton with a request. Could you please make the bag in a size 25 that would uh, better suit her petite frame? And thus she wore this bag everywhere, increasing its popularity. The bag found a huge fan base and has since become a Louis Vuitton icon of the house. Apparently in 1964, Jackie Kennedy Onassis walks into a Gucci boutique and leaves with six of the same bag. And at the time it was called the 50s Constance. And from then on, she was photographed with this bag so many times, worn in so many different situations, boasting its versatility 
and the bag was renamed the Gucci Jackie. This has been reissued under numerous creative directors since that have been at the helm of Gucci. And again, this is a bag that is deemed to be one of Gucci's classic pieces. Moving on to a story that I think we're all quite familiar with, the story of the Birkin bag, how it came to be, okay? Rumor has it that Jane Birkin was in business or first class on a flight with Jean-Louis Dumas, who was uh, chief executive of of Hermes at the time. I think there was an incident where like she dropped her bag or something, her item spilled onto the floor and she was complaining about the fact that, you know, she can't seem to find a bag that suits her needs. So goes the tale that on that flight, the two of them collaborated on a design that would be known as the Hermes Birkin bag. Obviously, since that bag has come out, it has been seen on the arm of every celebrity under the sun, it seems, right? And apparently this bag wasn't crazily popular at the time, but as time went on, its popularity grew, um, an instance of which can be seen in Sex and City, when Samantha um, famously asks to join the waitlist for a bag and swindles Lucy Liu as a client just so she can get this bag. Things like that have further popularized the bag to its status now that it is almost known to be the queen of all designer bags. And my final example, speaking of Sex in the City, in 1997, Sylvia Venturini Fendi designed the Fendi baguette based on the fact that fabulous French women would carry around a baguette sort of, you know, like under their armpit very nonchalantly through the streets of Paris. And this was a bag that featured heavily, I'm actually sure that this is the most worn bag on Sex and the City. Shout out to Patricia Field, the costume designer that, I'm, um, you know, made all of these sartorial decisions for the show. I actually found out that Fendi was the first fashion house that loaned items to Sex and the City. But famously in the year 2000, episode 17 of season three, so uh, Carrie gets mugged and the guy says, give me your bag. And she goes, yes, it's a baguette. But this was a show that catapulted fashion trends into the mainstream, right? And thus the popularity of the Fendi baguette shot through the roof. Again, sort of much like the Gucci Jackie, it sort of waned a bit and was reintroduced, I believe in 2016, and is again now treated to be a permanent piece of the House of Fendi. As we know, the Fendi baguette is one of my favourite bag styles and I could sit here and talk about it all day. I shan't bore you, bore you with that. But I'm sure there are so many other examples of iconic designer bags that have been popularised by the iconic women that have seen to be wearing them. These bags are even, like, not even iconic in my opinion. These bags are classics, true and true. Um, the bags that I've spoken about, the youngest of which is 25 years old, these are bags that are milestones in luxury fashion and are core parts of luxury fashion history. There's a narrative, there's a fantasy behind each one, a story, right? And each of these famous women wore these bags over and over again and it was that close association between the bag and the woman that really helped fuel the fire behind these items. And I think that it was the repetition, the regularity, the fact that you would see these women with these bags over and over again that have cemented these bags as icons and helped them get that mainstream popularity. And while there are definitely classic and iconic bags outside of the ones that I've spoken about that don't have this sort of very close association to, um, you know, very popular or very famous women, that celebrity endorsement almost has definitely helped. The interesting thing is that can this be done again? Will a new bag be able to come along and have such a strong association with one celebrity in order to cement itself in the way that these bags have in the past? I think that it's very hard today to replicate that funnel of success for a bag. You don't see very much of one celebrity, especially one that is like very A-list, very much 
in the spotlight constantly, wearing one bag over and over again, that association is so strong. And I think that maybe that's because there are so many launches constantly. There is so much celebrity gifting. They're spoilt for choice. You know, why would you just carry one bag over and over again when I can change out my bag on a daily or even hourly basis, I'm sure. Or even celebrity contracts with brands if they're brand ambassadors, maybe as part of the contract, it's that they have to carry the latest and greatest, not like one specific bag over the time of their contract. There's so much that goes into these things behind the scenes that we will really never have full transparency over that you lose that loyalty towards one piece that was the success behind a lot of these classic bags that we know and love. I think maybe like the most recent example of this that I can think of is Mary Kate Olsen's obsession with the Balenciaga city bag, right? She wore that bag into the ground. It was almost an extension of her. Now I think similarly she does the same to a Birkin, but I really can't think of another sort of more recent example of that happening. And times change and marketing changes and all of these brands have to adapt to survive and all of that business, right? So maybe we won't see things being cemented in sort of fashion history and as classics as we have done and maybe that looks different now. It's also about the story. And this is something that can't be fabricated, it can't be strategized, and to have these stories is very rare. Luxury fashion is very much a fantasy, it's very much an escape, and so by having these stories it just paints a picture even more rich than it being just a bag. And, th and I'm thinking about doing a video all about sort of how much we get fed all of the time and how many collections are put out. But it's not just spring, summer and autumn, winter anymore. There are capsule collections, there are collaborations that come out randomly, there's limited edition, there's um, Valentine's special editions. All of these different collections and the vast amounts of luxury items in general, but specifically in this case we're talking about bags that we see all of the time, it's hard for anything new to sort of establish itself as a classic now. What do you think? Am I making sense? Does that make sense? What are your thoughts? I'm going to leave a link to another video over here in case you haven't already seen it. Have an amazing morning, afternoon or evening wherever you are. And in the words of my father... If you've enjoyed it, tell your friends. If you haven't, keep your mouth shut. I'll see you in my next video. Mwah. Bye, guys.